as the coxswains align their shells, the bow will raise her hand to let starter John Walker know that that crew is not pointed in the right direction. Right now, Sac State's having some issues. We're going to a countdown start. Hands will not be recognized. Five, four, three, two, one. Attention, go. That's the start of event number 65, the women's collegiate second varsity petite final. Very clean starts by all six crews. Usually takes some hundred meters or so till you see which crew is going to pop out in front. And right now that crew is in lane one, Sacramento State, followed by lane two, the Iowa Hawkeyes, then the Crimson Tide in three, Sooners of Oklahoma in four. And then in lane six, the Oregon State A boat leads its B boat. 250 meters gone. A very tight boat race with Alabama now pushing their bow ball ahead. The Crimson Tide, if the only non white hull in this race, now has a three seat advantage. Over three crews are battling for second place. Great racing, nothing to disturb the balance or the ability of the boat to be moved at hull speed. Coming up to the 500 meter mark, it's still Alabama, your leader. And then Oklahoma in that second spot, followed by Sac State. And then Iowa, and then the Two crews from Oregon State in fifth and sixth position. On the water with event number 65, this is the women's collegiate second varsity petite final. Once again, our lane assignments. In lane number one, Sacramento State. In lane two, Iowa. In lane three, our current leader, Alabama. University of Oklahoma is pulling out of lane four. In lane five is the Oregon State B crew. And in lane six is the Oregon State A crew. And a couple of things to comment on Charles Luckman would be number one, the fact that Alabama, a relatively new program, is appointing themselves very well at the San Diego Crew Classic. And comment also on the battle between A and B with Oregon State. Yes, yeah, some interesting things here. Uh, rumor has it that the Oregon State B boat in lane five is in fact a novice boat, a novice freshman boat. And uh, they performed very well yesterday. And they're obviously going to stir up their program a little bit if they beat their A boat today. Uh, the rest of the race is going to be very intriguing. Alabama are out there, but Iowa and Oklahoma are going to be hot on their tails. Approaching 1,000 meters, our 500-meter call of Alabama on the lead continues. They are challenged on their outside shoulder by Oklahoma, and then Iowa and Sacramento State are having a bit of an argument for third spot there, followed by the Oregon State crews on the outboard side, and it looks like the A crew currently has a slight edge over the B crew in lanes six and five on the far outside. On yesterday's times, Iowa and Alabama were both 652s. Now, conditions were changing a lot yesterday. They changed from one race to another. So comparative times from yesterday, a little difficult to uh, extrapolate anything from today. But if they're accurate and comparative, then we can expect a very tight race between Alabama and Iowa. Continuing on the lead is Alabama in lane number three. They continue to be shadowed by Oklahoma on the outside. Falling back along the shoreline, Iowa and Sacramento State. Sacramento State got a good start 
and apparently got tangled up with their timing or whatever, starting from about the 1,000 meter mark to 1750, and they now have an open water trail behind them. So turn attention now to Alabama in lane three, with Iowa getting back into the hunt in their gold uniforms. And then outside of Alabama, that would be Oklahoma. The Sooners have also moved up. On the far outside, the Oregon State A crew certainly not going away, and uh, the B crew staying right, right with them. Yes, Alan, uh, looks like there's a real uh, civil war, if I can use that in terms of Oregon, uh, going on between the A and B boats out in lanes five and six. Uh, the A boat have moved ahead, but the B boat are tracking them hard and really trying to stay with them. And that is pushing them onto the tussle at the front between Alabama and Iowa, and I think Iowa have moved past Alabama. On the outside, Oregon State University certainly making their presence known. Alabama, the leader from about 500 meters on, has relinquished that to Iowa. So watch on the far outside, that would be Oregon State University. And they look like they may be in, lead, in the lead at this time. Oregon State A boat on the far outside. Then inside to Alabama, check that to Iowa in that second spot, Alabama moving along in third. The Oregon State B boat is also on the hunt with Oklahoma dropping back and Sacramento State dropping back. On the outside, probably unbeknownst to some of the interior crews, Oregon State A boat has jumped up on it. They turned the motor on with about 500 meters to go and uh, they slid past everybody else. I suspect in the middle of our crews, they were watching each other and not paying any attention to Oregon State. It is a three boat race across with Oregon State B crew, Alabama and Iowa. But clearly the leader is Oregon State in first position. Iowa looks like they've closed into that second spot. They are going past Alabama and the Oregon State B crew is in the fourth position. All the way on the outside, it continues to be Oregon State University with Iowa on the move, Alabama battling one-on-one -on -one there. As on the outside, it appears that Oregon State University's A crew will get it. And then very close between Iowa, Alabama, and the Oregon State B crew with uh, Sacramento State and uh, the Sooners from Oklahoma trailing. Yes, I think the... Uh Obviously a win for Oregon State's A crew. I think Iowa got there in second, but I have a feeling the Oregon State B crew might have just pat, pipped Alabama for third spot, and Oklahoma got there over the top of Sac State, Sacramento State. That's all, all unofficial, of course. Well, speaking about unofficial, we do have an official scoreboard that is available for you. It is uh, just to the north of the tent area and uh, an opportunity to go through the tent area and also see some of the vendor activity that's going on there. We also have a merchandise tent near the uh, central entrance of the San Diego Crew Classic and uh, they are in a situation where they offer uh, about an hour after a race is completed an individual DVD of that particular race. So if you'd like to have a souvenir of the 38th annual running of the San Diego Crew Classic and a particular race therein. Stop by the merchandise tent and pick up your copy of a DVD that is available for each individual race about an hour after the race is completed. The cost is just 50.